Hi, so my name is Dave Evans. I'm the CTO and co-founder of Play Canvas. Uh, we're a London-based startup and we're making the world's first cloud-hosted game development platform. Um, I want to talk today about some game development trends that I've been noticing over the last few years and how that's influenced the way we're designing Play Canvas. So just a tiny introduction about Play Canvas. We're making a JavaScript and WebGL-based 3D game engine. We're making cloud-hosted game development tools and we're making a publishing platform for the web and for mobile games. Um, but I want to start this by telling you a story. This is Trina. She's 17 years old from Oak Creek, Wisconsin. She's into programming, video games, and sci-fi. She's taught programming at school, but she picks up JavaScript in her spare time and starts to build a game, a game using Play Canvas. She's overambitious, uh, she's young, and she starts building her uh, magnum opus, the Oort Zone Battle Force Alpha. This is about the point where most rookie game developers give up, they've given it a name. But <laughs> she gets into the community, she asks questions, she starts discussions, and the community pays back in, in, in spades. So she learns networking, she learns coding, all from the community. Her graphics, her artistic skills aren't up to, up to much. Um, but she's the post-Minecraft generation, so she's a PC gamer. She's grown up with ubiquitous smartphone usage. And so her game has a unique design slant. It's a, an online network multiplayer game with a separate mobile minigame side, uh, side to it. By day, she's a mild-mannered student. By night, she churns out build after build of the game, shipping them to the five or six developers who follow her on the site and her friends from school. The game's written for the web, it runs in JavaScript, so it runs, uh, so it's a single code base for desktop and mobile. Her artwork doesn't improve, but her gameplay does, and as her devlog followers increase, she starts more conversations with artists, and she meets a guy who goes by the username of NG. NG works for a 3D art outsourcing company in Hanoi, Vietnam. In his spare time, he loves to model spaceships. He joins the team, and with his new artwork, the game grabs a whole load of new followers and new fans. Um, it, small sub-communities start developing on Twitter, on Facebook, on Reddit, on YouTube. And, uh, and the game is just a link. It gets shared again and again and again. At the weekend, Trina spends all day coding. She live streams her development to hundreds of fans. Super fans log into Play Canvas and they beg, borrow, or steal to get access to her, uh, read access to her project. They drop in and out of the, gameplay, uh, of the game development environment, and they play builds live as they're developed. The game team increases to five. Trina in Wisconsin, uh, NG in Vietnam, two new programmers in London and Paris, and a new artist in San Francisco. All working remotely and collaboratively using the cloud. The game becomes a real business. They start selling access to the known universe, a, a core subset of uh, moderated <laughs> servers. Um, they employ the biggest YouTuber as the community manager, and then finally Notch tweets about the game, and it explodes. <laughs> so this is clearly a fiction. <laughs> um, but there are some real game development trends in there, and I want to talk about them now. So the first one, rookie game developers very rarely get past naming their game. I went through a load of the Play Canvas projects and I picked all the ones that had absolutely no new artwork or code in them, just a name and a description. So one of them, Adventure Seal. The, <laughs> the, the description is uh, a bad wizard turns you into a seal. Uh, we also have games called uh, Forgotten Sanctum. We have uh, Nappy Flush Saga. Um, and one called Grand Theft Auto, which the description says might be a bit shit, but good if your dad won't let you buy GTA 5. <laughs> um, but okay, so the real trends. The real trends are indie game devs are killing it. The um, innovation is all happening at the moment with indie game developers. If you're running a $200 million game franchises, fr franchise, you can't risk trying to innovate on um, that type of a project. <clears throat> Remote collaboration is getting bigger and bigger in game development. Google Docs changed the way people work by moving desktop software into the cloud, and we finally have the same sort of technology for game developers, particularly with something like Play Canvas. 
If you, want to act, if you want to access the best talent in the world, you need to have access to the world. Community are, is bigger than the sum of its parts. <clears throat> um, if you're looking to learn new skills, you can learn them faster with a good community. If you're looking to find new people, if you're looking to uh, find cool stuff, you can discover it quicker with a better community. And if you want to collaborate with that stuff, you can do it better with a good community. Fans want to be close to their developers. 15,000 people watched Notch live stream his last Ludum Dare game. Thousands tune in to watch Vlambeer every week. Um, <clears throat> with something like Play Canvas, we're building, we're building Play Canvas with the idea that the development process is interesting and people want to be a participate in this. No one's going to argue that the mobile platforms are not the biggest platforms to be on at the moment. But um, 7,000 games get released to the iOS App Store every month, and it's easy to get lost in that crowd. For an independent game developer, the PC is not dead. Pick your platform wisely based on your team and your game. And finally, always bet on the web. No matter what future technology hands to us, be it a tablet, a mobile, a TV, or a watch, you can guarantee there's going to be a built-in web browser. It's the ultimate in cross-platform publishing environment. So, very quickly, summarise Play Canvas is trying to do. We're building, uh, moving game development in the cloud to make it easier for everyone. We're building a community, not just a forum, but baked into the game tools. We're, move, we're trying to give fans, get fans closer to developers, and we're building a global platform for publishing 